Okay, everybody, I want to show you my uh, emergency backup uh, power supply cart that I made. Um, the reason why I made this is uh, here in California, where I grew up, I've never experienced power outages, but the last three, four years, um, I don't know what's going on, but we're uh, getting our power interrupted. Uh, especially in the summertime, we'll have these brownouts. And then as we go into the fall, uh, when it gets windy, Edison will cut the power. And the last time they did it, our power was out for 36 hours. And that was a big problem because chest freezer, I had hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of food. We ended up having to toss out because I didn't have a generator or any way to power that and there, everybody's power around here was out so I couldn't bring the food anywhere else. Uh, so we needed a way to power the freezer and the refrigerator and I looked around for um, ready-made off-the-shelf uh, power supply banks and in order to have enough power to power the freezer and the fridge for at least a day it was going to run at least three thousand dollars so I decided to make my own and so I'm going to walk you through uh, where it all starts. So uh, what I've got here are two six volt golf cart batteries. I bought them from Costco. They're 210 amp hours and um, I have them wired in series. See how there's a, a jumper here from from the uh, negative to positive. So I've got them wired in series to make a 12 volt battery. Now a lot of people are gonna say, well, why didn't you get a lithium battery? Okay, well, those are expensive. Um, these batteries cost me $120 each. Um, so I had $240 into it. So in order to get a lithium battery um, of a, see these are 210 amp hours, but since they're lead acid, you can only draw them down 50%. So basically, I've got a 100, out, 100 amp hours of usable power. In order to get a lithium battery with 100 amp hours, because you can pretty much draw those all the way down, those are about $400 for a good one. Also, those lithium batteries have a lot of electronics in them to manage uh, the battery management system. And these are old school lead acid batteries so these are pretty much EMP proof um, I don't know if uh, if an EMP hits if those lithium batteries will survive all right so um, I do keep a spare inverter in a Faraday bag uh, in case something like that happens so we're good to go on this also I have mounted this on a plastic cart that I bought from Harbor Freight. I, this was about a hundred dollars for the cart and um, I could have got a cheaper metal cart but I felt since I'm doing a lot of uh, electrical here I want to have reduced the um, chance of having any type of shorts on the cart. So this is a plastic cart. So I've got the positive and the negative over there this uh, um, larger wire goes to the inverter and I have a small wire with an inline fuse that um, goes to a little um, thing where you can plug in a cigarette lighter or charge your cell phone. All right, so this is the 12 volt battery and I drilled a couple of holes there and the 12 volts before it hits the inverter, I put a... Uh, fuse. Now this is the kind of fuse you'd see for a car amp. Um, I put one in there. I felt it was very important to have a fuse on there. I've seen some people do it without fuses. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, so that's where the 12 volts goes into the inverter on the positive and then the negative. Um, how I set that one up is I put in a disconnect with this key. So all you have to do to energize the um, inverter 
is to f turn on this key. All right, and now the inverter came with this remote start. So go ahead and turn that on. And now the inverter's on, okay? And I also wired up this. It's got an on off switch. And right here it shows our voltage. We have 12.7 right now. There is a socket where you can plug in a cigarette lighter. And over here on this one, it's got some USB plugs so you can plug in your cell phone. All right. Now to save power, you can just go ahead and turn that off. So right now all we're doing is energizing the inverter. And on the inverter, I just, uh, you just plug in your extension cords to your freezer. This is a thousand watt Renergy inverter. It's a pure sine wave inverter. Don't go cheap on your inverter. Get a pure sine wave inverter. Do not get one of those modified sine waves. It could affect electronics or how your refrigerator freezer operates. Um, this is only a thousand watts, but it's plenty enough to run that freezer and the refrigerator. And I tested it. And with those two golf cart batteries, it ran for about 18 hours. Now I can expand and put two more golf cart batteries down here. And um, then I would have a pretty heavy duty uh, long-term solution. Additionally, I could add a solar charge controller to this setup and um, put out a solar panel to charge up these panels during if we have a long duration outage. So I just wanted to walk you through this. And um, so basically how it works is when you want to turn on the system, what we do is we uh, first check the voltage. Yep, we got 12.7. Then go ahead and energize the inverter and then turn it on and then we're good to go. All right, guys. So hopefully this helps um, just to let you know how much money I spent on this. Uh, those batteries were $120 each. The cart was about $100. I believe this inverter was about $300. So it's three, four, five, six. 640 and then the lugs and wiring I got about $700 into this but like I said in order to have this run capacity with one of those off-the-shelf units it would be definitely over $2,000 um, oh and one last thing with those off-the-shelf units where it's all in one um, if one component breaks in there um, I don't even know how you'd get that fixed. But with my system, if I have a component that breaks, I just change it out. If the inverter goes bad, get a new inverter. Um, and uh, it's a really not complicated system. And like I said, you plug in your cell phone in here if you need to charge it. Plug in a cigarette lighter. Now, as far as how I charge the batteries, um, it's really easy. I just bought this really cheap um, 12 volt trickle charger from Harbor Freight. And I just put the leads right there on the battery and charge it up. I could also hook up a solar charge controller. Um, if I was in a jam, hook up a generator to the batteries, charge the batteries, uh, maybe even run some leads for the car, from the car. So uh, it's a very versatile way to charge these batteries. All right, so I hope this helps guys and um, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more do-it-yourself videos. Thanks.